Hello, everyone. Hope everyone can hear me okay. Welcome. I'm Vicki Cardona. I'm Community Manager at Envision. Thanks so much for joining us today. We've got tons of cool stuff to go over and share with you, so I'm super excited. To start things off, Kartik Mahadevan, CEO at Envision, will be telling us about a very cool new feature on the Envision glasses that is currently being tested and will be released to everyone very soon. So please stay tuned for this very exciting announcement. Next, I am delighted and honored to welcome our very special guest panelists today, world-renowned social media influencer, Sam Seavey. Many of you may be very familiar with his YouTube channel, which has gained immense popularity worldwide, The Blind Life, where he provides tons of trip of <laughs> tons of there, tips, tricks, and hacks on how to live your very bl best blind life. And some of you may have seen the in-depth review he did on the Envision glasses a couple of years back, um, which was actually pretty awesome. But the glasses have since undergone so many changes and gotten so many cool and exciting updates. We thought it was definitely time for an update, an updated review. We're really excited to see it. And it will be available on his YouTube channel, channel goodness, <laughs> uh, this coming Saturday, October 28th. I think I need to get some, also some tips on, from Sam on how to not be as nervous when I do these webinars. <laughs> anyway, of course, we'll be passing on the YouTube video that he will, uh, his YouTube review on the glasses. As soon as it's out, we're going to be um, sharing it across our communities as soon as we can. So please look out for that. And of course, you can always follow his YouTube channel, The Blind Life. We're, we are thrilled that Sam will be able to spend some time with us here today on a virtual fireside chat with Kartik Mahadevan, where he will be sharing some of his insights on blindness technology and artificial intelligence, just to name a few. Next, Kartik Cannon, Chief Technical Officer at Envision, will be going under the hood and telling us about the latest and greatest features coming to a pair of Envision glasses and app near you. Next, we'll be hearing from Envision CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, Vanessa Viger, who will be telling us about our upcoming in-person Envision event, Inclusive Innovations, which will be held in the Netherlands in November. And after that, it's your turn to ask us any questions you may have. More on that in just a moment. But first, just a bit of housekeeping. So if we could please move to the housekeeping slide if we're not there already. Today's webinar is being recorded and streamed live on YouTube. We ask that you please hold off until the Q&A session at the end of the presentations before asking your questions. Please, 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 if you can hold off until the Q&A session, that would be awesome and very much appreciated. And we will get to as many of your questions as we possibly can, we promise. Also, out of respect for everyone's time, please keep your questions short to the point and relevant to the rest of the audience. You can ask us questions in one of the following ways. On Zoom, you can use either the Q&A window or the raise hand function, which can be invoked by using the keystroke Alt-Y on Windows and Option-Y on Mac. If you're invited to speak, the keystroke to mute and unmute yourself is Alt-A for Windows and Command-Shift-A for Mac. For those of you on YouTube, by all means, don't be shy please feel free to ask your questions via the YouTube chat function. And now, without further ado, let's kick things off, shall we? Kartik, over to you. 
Uh, thank you, Vicky, uh, for that uh, amazing introduction. And uh, let me now get into the, uh, you know, like some of the big announcements that we have uh, under the pipeline. Stuff that we've been uh, working on uh, for a while, uh, but we haven't been able to, um, you know, uh, publicly speak about it as of yet. Um, so one of the big things that has been happening in the field of generative AI uh, has been very, very uh, fascinating for Envision um, to be involved in and to be uh, able to have access to some of the cutting edge stuff that's been happening in this field of generative AI. Uh, like a lot of you experienced uh, the big ask Envision, a feature that, you know, like, you know, that we put out uh, in the beginning of the year where uh, it sort of added an additional superpower and additional ability for people to be able to ask a question of any piece of text around them right so any a document that was available people could just take a picture of it and just interact with the document ask it any sort of a question that they want to and the ai will uh, be able to both understand the, the question that you're asking of it and be able to offer you an answer uh, that you're looking for right it can be something as as simple as uh, what is the price of an ice cream in a menu or something as complex as uh, you know uh, just a, a read me uh, the, the, you know like the vegan and uh, gluten-free options that are in the menu right we have seen a lot of applications of this also at work where people were using this feature to do their work in a lot more efficient way uh, there were people who were able to uh, decrease the work that it took, took, took them to do uh, to just you know enter a data from a document into a system from like 30 minutes down to two minutes you know, like thanks to this very very a powerful feature called ask envision so ask envision in combination with scan text was a game changer because it sort of you know, you know like combined the very accurate uh, like a text recognition that is built in within scan text uh, and a use uh, your GPT to be able to ask very important questions of that. And now we're taking it a step up down further where we are introducing ask and vision within a, a, a described scene. So any of you who are familiar with described scene, uh, either on the Envision app or on the glasses, you are aware of the fact that how a described scene can give you a very simple like one sentence description of a scene that you're in right uh, it started off in your know, early days with a very simplistic a description of things where if i took a picture of whatever is in front of me right now it will say uh, it looks like a laptop sitting on a table then about a two months back we pushed out an update to the described scene across the glasses and the app where the description got a little more you know, like a descriptive, where it could now say it looks like a MacBook, uh, which is a sitting on a brown a wooden table. So it sort of got a bit more a descriptive, it sort of understood the context a bit more, and it got a bit more you know, like, you know, descriptive than what it was previously able to do. But now with the latest iteration uh, of Ask Envision, uh, you know, you know, uh, of a described scene, the descriptions have gotten immensely descriptive. It's able to not just understand the different objects that are uh, you know, inside of a scene, but also understand you know, like the relationships between them and uh, what a combination of these objects could actually you know, mean. right? And that's where uh, it unlocks a whole new you know, paradigm where it can sort of offer you these amazingly nuanced a description of stuff around you. And that's just the, you know, like the first step, right? In addition to giving you these incredible description, now these scenes, these images are also something that you can interact with, right? Uh, which means you can just ask it a question that you do want to ask about a scene, right? So you can ask it for stuff like, what is the color of a shirt that somebody is wearing? Or you can ask it for, uh, is there a, you know, you know, like a trash can in the room that you can see? Uh, you can ask for anything that, uh, you know, so any kind of information that you're, as you're seeking of an image around you. So that's the, like the big feature. It has been uh, in uh, like a private a beta for uh, you know, like the past month. And with the feedback from the beta testers, we have been uh, very iteratively 
improving on this feature and now we are very uh, close to uh, you know like uh, you know, you know, like releasing it uh, publicly as an open uh, beta uh, so all of you can expect these uh, this feature to come out very very uh, shortly it will hit you know, you know first the envision uh, glasses and you know, you know and like very uh, shortly afterwards it will also be available on the envision app uh, like uh, without uh, talking about this a uh, bit you know, further let me you know, I show you a small a glimpse of uh, the video that we actually have from your, 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 your exam. Uh, you know, uh, he's still putting together his complete a review of the Envision glasses, but he was uh, you know, kind enough to, to you know, share a glimpse of uh, what the outcome might look like. So let me you know, show you that a video before I bring on you know, Sam uh, as a guest uh, and uh, you know, and and uh, I'll have a chat with him. And I hope this video gives you an understanding of exactly what our vision is capable of. Again. All right, so I want to try Ask Envision again because we've got a really cool scene here. The front of this shop is covered with pumpkins and there's a bench. There's a lot of elements in the scene. I'd like to see how it identifies all of these things. In the scene, there is a sidewalk in front of a store. The sidewalk is lined with pumpkins, which are placed on the ground and scattered around the area. There are multiple pumpkins visible, creating a festive atmosphere for the fall season. Additionally, there are several cars parked along the sidewalk, adding to the vibrant and colorful ambiance. A bench can be seen near the pumpkins, providing a place for people to sit and enjoy the surroundings. Overall, the scene captures the essence of Halloween, with the pumpkins decorating the sidewalk and the cars adding to the festive atmosphere. It's a perfect setting for anyone who loves the fall season and wants to immerse themselves in the Halloween spirit. Wow, that is incredible, man. They gave a ton of information. It got the pumpkins, it got the bench, it even saw the cars. The Envision glasses actually have a very wide angle camera, so it gets a lot of the scene in at once but it did a great job and i love that it gathers all the information and kind of paints a picture and in this case giving some like emotion and feeling and i'm down man i'm 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 in the fall halloween spirit this is awesome <laughs> and that my friends is ask envision utilizing ai and chat gpt All right, so that was a glimpse of uh, you know, what Ask Envision could do. Uh, it sort of, you know, like, I not just understood that there are you know, like pumpkins outside a shop, but it was able to put that into a context and say it looks like a decorations, you know, like, you know, like for the Halloween season. So that additional your context and that additional bit of intelligence is uh, what makes uh, this next frontier of AI very, very exciting. And we are just uh, scratching the surface of it. And to talk about this a bit more, I would uh, like to you know, I welcome the guest uh, of the webinar today, Sam. Hey, Sam, how are you doing today? Hey, Karthik, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good as well, Sam. Thanks so much for uh, coming on. And uh, you know, like, uh, and, uh, and, uh, like, uh, like uh, we just saw a glimpse of you uh, playing with the Envision uh, glasses. Um, but yeah, like I think I want to start off with um, you know maybe just understanding your a general you know like view because you are somebody who does see a lot of technology uh, you know you know uh, uh, evolve. Uh, so what is uh, you know like your your your, your thoughts of um, the speed at which AI has evolved over the past uh, couple of years, and in your experience, you know like what's next for AI and technologies like this. Yeah, um, AI, yeah, you, you cannot deny that AI has really kind of blown up over the last, even very short, you know, short uh, two or three years. Um, and, you know, on one hand, you might think that's maybe a little too fast, maybe, you know, <laughs> when are the robots going to start taking over kind of thing. But um, you also cannot deny the benefit, though, for assistive technology. Um, I mean, that's that clip right there, it, it makes me laugh every time I hear it because it just, it just gave so much information. Um, and actually there's another clip in the, in the video. Uh, I did another ask and vision. Um, oh, I did the scene detection or description in one area. And it just said it was a parking lot in front of a building. And that was it. 
and I'm like, okay, yeah, technically that is what it is. You know, it, it, it described the scene, but then I did the exact same scene. I did the ask and vision and it just gave me so much more information. I mean, it talked about the cars that were in the parking lot, how far um, spaced apart they were. It mentioned that it could see a traffic light in the background indicating a much busier street than the one that I was currently on. Um, I mean, it just gave a ton more information. And for someone who's non-visual, you know, all of that information is extremely important and um, can be very helpful. Awesome. And how do you uh, like see all these uh, tools implement, uh, you sort of impacting, you know, like your work, like, you know, like the work that you do, uh, you know, like, you know, like both as an influence and otherwise, are you already are seeing impacts of your of the how AI is is you know, you're making your work easy or uh, you know you're like making it you know, a bit more a bit more efficient. It, it it can be yeah yeah. There's there's tools um, in my editing that you know automatically AI you can use AI to automatically properly color the scene you know. Um, or there's some new tools that for me as an editor. Um, which I actually used in the, in the upcoming Envision video where the background caused my face to be kind of dark. And so with one or two clicks of, of the mouse, AI would go in and it would recognize that my face needed to be brighter um, because that was the subject of the shot and it made it brighter for me. So things like that, there's AI tools that can help with you know my audio, improving my audio, I mean, there's 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 even some crazy AI things out now that will completely. I just put all the footage into the program, click a button, come back in ten minutes, and I've got a completed video. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's really. Uh, I don't I don't want to kind of rely on it and as a crutch because it's good to know how to do these things the old fashioned way, I guess you could say. But man, if it can speed up the whole process, I'm I'm down for that. <laughs> um, and I think uh, one of the things that's very really, you're fascinating about uh, uh, you, Sam, is you have a very engaged um, you know, audience. Um, you know, you have a very engaged group of people, like you know, you know like you're, you're like who follow you, but also who interact with you at events and things like that. Um, you know, what are like the common like 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 a questions that you see that you get asked often from you know like the community or the people that you interact with is there like a you know like a pattern or like a trend that you're seeing uh you know, you know, you know evolve on the basis of your interactions um i mean i get i get the usual things um people asking about product availability um you know when when uh new new products come out new upgrades things like that what's it, what's the new exciting stuff kind of on on the horizon um i i i talk about ai a lot um as one of those new exciting things look i'll be honest i've done this long enough that i don't get excited about new things you know <laughs> i've seen it all um, I'm, I'm a very practical, I'm a, I'm a tech reviewer. So I'm looking at the pros and the cons. I'm not getting excited about the new flashy gizmo kind of thing. Um, I'm more interested in how well it's going to work for the community. And, but I mean, you can see in that clip there, my, my genuine reaction that I was like blown away about how much information it was giving me because I I I, fore, I foresee this just getting better. I mean, you already talked about that. This is only the start because um, I can see, you know, one thing I would love to see, and this is this is a task for you guys, and I'm sure you're you're already working on it. But I would love to have a day where where someone could navigate to the front door of the Starbucks, and then they go in the Starbucks, and with a click. They scan the entire the room, the environment, and they will get all the information that they need as far as is it full of people? Um, are there tables and chairs? You know where they are located. Where is the countertop? The direction of the countertop? How far away the countertop is? Is there a wet floor sign sitting in front of me, in between me and the countertop? You know that's that's really the the um, the benefit I think, and and the the beauty of of AI and chat GPT is, is it can give you that very contextual information, that very granular 
information that is going to be extremely helpful for us. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And and I think that kind of a future is a lot closer than, uh, you know, like the earlier <laughs> like thought it would be so like we are in the process of uh, just like so like rethinking the whole interface you know uh your, 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 around both the classes and the app because uh yeah i think uh now it you know like needs to start behaving as uh like a visual assistant you know somebody you can interact with just ask simple like questions and yeah. just be in the background and just be there as an assistant as and when you need it. And that sort of is you know, not the, you know, like a direction where it is uh, 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 sort of heading into. Um, but uh, just speaking of the review, Sam, like you did a review of the, of the classes you know, two years back. Um, and after you know, two years, you're doing you know, another review. Uh, but like uh, without uh, giving you know, too much away, you know, is there you know, like, you know, like one thing that really surprised you about the classes um, after two years? Um, well, the, the, the AI, the chat GPT definitely surprised me of how much, you know, bonus information it provides. Um, but not really surprised me, but I did, I can say confidently that I, I liked all the upgrades that you guys have made all the updates, um, especially, you know, simple things like redesigning the menu system, um, you know, having it just a linear menu start to finish makes it so much easier. Uh, I've seen so many different devices where the, the menu system is too complicated and someone who is maybe not very tech savvy, they get in there and they start moving around and it's just too complicated and they completely, they're like, frustrated i'm i'm not even done going to deal with this so simplifying the the menu was absolutely a a right thing to do a right move so i appreciated that but no I, you know spoiler you guys will see the the review on saturday but i liked all the updates i didn't have any negative things to say about it <laughs> awesome i appreciate that and yeah i think uh you know, like we're all excited to you know like you know like to see the full video do you say saturday Saturday, yes, Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Awesome. All right. Uh, I hope everybody has that on the calendars and we're all very excited about it. Uh, <laughs> like, like, you know, like just before I let you go, Sam, is there anything else you would like to you know, plug and you know, upcoming exciting uh, stuff that you're up to? Uh, so like what's next for, for your, your, your tech Sam and the blind life? Well, actually, um, I, first of all, I'd like to say hello to everybody that's in the webinar. This is awesome. Tons of people in here. Um, also want to shout out to Vicky. Vicky, if you knew how many times I messed up when recording my videos, <laughs> even after 10 years of making them, I screw up all the time. So don't feel bad. Um, but uh, new things, actually, as the video goes live on Saturday, I will be flying over the ocean heading to Australia. Uh, for a tech conference in Adelaide, Australia on November 2nd. Um, it's called Tech Fest through the organization See Differently. So if anybody is in Australia and near Adelaide, come out and say hello. Um, I'm really excited about that. I'm not too excited about my 30-hour travel day, but um, <laughs> I know 16 hours, uh, one flight is 16 hours long. That's that's going to be a lot of fun. But um, But no, I'm looking forward to it. And then hopefully... Another small trip in December, but taking it easy for the holidays. And then we're going to be back at it next year for probably ATIA in Orlando. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Sam, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, do stick around because there are people who might have uh, questions for you when we go into the Q&A. Uh, Absolutely. The webinar. Um, but, uh, like, but uh, before we uh, jump into the Q&A, I want to pass on... Um, you know, like the screen to Karthik Kakanan, who's going to uh, give us some under the hood uh, glimpses as to what's happening in the labs of Envision. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Karthik, for uh, going ahead and uh, yeah, bringing me on. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is another exciting month at Envision uh, where we are working on a whole bunch of new things. Uh, of course, you know, uh, Karthik mentioned about uh, what we're doing with regards to ask, you know, Envision within the describe scene feature. Uh, I'm here to give you a quick update as to what's happening on the app side of things as well. So on the Envision app, uh, 
we released a new update today, which is the new explore mode on the Envision app. So, uh, so far, you know, anyone who has used the Envision app uh, might be very familiar with the find objects feature and the find people feature where you can go ahead and uh, use the Envision app to recognize people or objects around you, specific objects. The explore mode is taking the whole object, uh, find objects feature uh, and find people feature to the next level. So now when you turn on the explore mode, what happens is you would be able to go ahead, uh, the app would start giving you an, uh, a description, a quick uh, idea of what is all around you. So you could just turn it on and the app would say chair, cup, table, doors, stairs, uh, and so on. And uh, as you keep moving around the phone, uh, the app would con constantly keep picking on different uh, objects in your environment and then speak them out to you. Uh, of course, this is just a starting point. Uh, with the iOS app, for example, we are working on a feature where not only would you know what is uh, what is in front of you, uh, if you're using any device that's an iPhone 12 Pro and above, so any device uh, that has a LiDAR sensor on it, uh, you would be able to go ahead and uh, you know also get the distance. So that's something that we're working on uh, with the Envision app as well. Now, we apart from including the explore mode, what we've also done is we've made changes to the document scanning feature. Uh, one, uh, what do you call, one interesting update with uh, scanning documents with Envision, with the Envision app specifically anymore, is that you don't have to go ahead and select the reading language explicitly. So you could just scan a document and Envision will automatically pick up the language and speak it out to you in the right language. And uh, wherever possible, Envision would go ahead and process your documents entirely offline. And uh, if we require uh, an internet connection uh, for some languages such as Arabic or uh, or Chinese or Hindi, uh, the glasses would go, the app would go ahead and use online uh, features uh, to be able to make that happen. So this is, these are the two uh, quick updates that we're pushing out on the Envision app as of today. Um, with the Envision glasses, of course, uh, Karthik mentioned about the Ask Envision within Describe theme. Uh, we're constantly going to keep improving this feature as well. And uh, if you're a glasses user, you can expect this feature to get more descriptive, more accurate uh, You know, as, as time goes on. And uh, we're also introducing multi-language voice commands. So this is something that we're still in the works right now. Uh, but for anyone who has used the Envision glasses uh, you know, not in, in, in any other language other than English, one of the biggest asks is always in can you also make voice commands work uh, with uh, you know with, with more languages so we're going to be introducing that as well on the emission glasses uh, and as always we have a lot more events uh, that are coming up uh, so I mean last month I told you about the in in event that uh, we're organizing so on the 23rd of November we are organizing uh, the inclusive innovations event uh, which is going to be uh, one of the more flagship events that Envision is organizing here in the Netherlands uh, and I'll have Vanessa talk more about the events as well so these are the main things that are under uh, the hood right now and uh, so it's over to you Karthik All right, let me pass it on to Tech Vanessa, who's going to talk to us all about inclusive innovations. Hey, and uh, it's lovely to uh, have so many people on board today. Thanks again, Sam, for joining us. And I can't, I'm counting down to that review. I was like, we'll set my alarm and get up there or get up in the night, whatever the time difference is. Anyway, really quickly, because I know we've got a lot of Q&A to go through, but the um, inclusive innovation. So this is actually the third event of this kind we did one in san francisco earlier this year and then two years ago we did something similar not quite the same in the netherlands and this year it's really exciting we're doing this on the 23rd of november and make sure i get my my dates right yep and that is in utrecht which is in the middle of the netherlands um interestingly enough we have a really cool guest speaker um he's called dr amit patel probably better known for folks in the uk he he actually is a presenter on tv he has something called uh the uh, dog squad which is all about guide dogs really really cute but he's also on social so you might want to check him out as a uh, uh, blind dad underscore uk um but we also have a panel a panel and speakers coming from the rnib from booking.com university of amsterdam with psychologists there uh, Unilever and uh, the Thomas Bonklinton Trust, which is a really awesome organization in the UK, finding employment opportunities for people who are blind and no vision. Uh, we represent that the entire uh, 
panels and all the speakers are either blind or low vision themselves, apart from one or two special ones. Um, and then we also open up the floor to a bunch of really cool tech uh, for people to uh, demo for five minutes. And that tech is also going to be available afterwards um, with a networking fair. So if you're in the Netherlands, or if you're in Europe and you fancy jumping on a train and coming up to us or dare I say, getting on a flight for the day, you'd, it'd be worth it. It's free, it's totally accessible. Um, and um, we have some also some really cool workshops. So check out the website. That's uh, our, our normal address, which is uh, letsenvision.com forward slash in, in, I N, I N. And uh, I'll hope to meet you there. Thank you, Kartik. All right, Mr. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it it, it 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 does seem like a very you know, fascinating you know, a lineup of speakers, but the focus is also on the innovators who are uh, doing some amazing innovations uh, to make this world a bit more inclusive and accessible. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is a platform that I hope a lot you know you know, it continues to grow, and eventually the idea is to build a community of you know, like such innovators so that uh, we can all do things in a more of a, of, a, of a collaborative way instead of all of us innovators operating in a silo because you know, you know, together i believe we can be much stronger with that uh the scheduled part of the webinar comes to a close uh i will open the floor now for uh, the questions part of the webinar there are uh, you know, like three ways to ask a question uh, you can either ask a question by you know, like raising your hand and if you do that, I will bring you on to the panel and then you can ask a question directly to any of the panelists. You can ask a question using the Q&A feature, which is built into Zoom. Uh, and uh, you can also ask a questions on like YouTube. If you're if you're you're watching this on on a YouTube, just you know, pop down the questions in the comments there. And we have a, a team member who is monitoring the YouTube comments and they'll be able to pick up the questions from there and uh, they'll ensure that we answer them on the webinar here. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, start uh, bringing in people. Uh, I already see a raised hand from Katresa Cruz. Katresa, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask us your question. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I... okay. Can can I, can I, um um AI be um used for um uh, videos? I know you like take a still picture and it'll identify the still picture. Can it do um moving videos too? Um, or... I think that's a good a good uh, like a question. I think eventually yes, that is the goal. Uh, so as of now, there is still a latency uh, and there is still a processing your know, time that is uh, you know, you know, you're in place because we do the processing of these images on the cloud and depending on internet speed, there is a latency that's still there uh, as far as the, you know, like the processing is concerned, but it is a latency that is becoming you know, like faster and you're faster, right? So the processing is becoming a lot more optimized and I think we will definitely reach a stage where we can you know, process uh, your know, images at a faster you know, rate. And if you think of a video, a video is nothing but just a bunch of images that are coming in at a lot of you know, like frames per second, right? It's it's you know, you know it's like you know, like a video is just a just a series of images in a line. So if we can do images, we can also do you know, like videos. Uh, the only thing that needs to be optimized for that is the speed at which these descriptions are being like churned out. But it's you know, like a not outside the realms of what's possible within the next six to eight months, I would say. So what if you, I'm like doing like, um, like if you're taking a photograph, it, it can use, it'll describe the people that in, inside of the photograph for you too. Like if you want to get everybody up for a picture or something and you want to use your camera, mm -hmm. can it be just a photograph thing? Because <clears throat> I know on camera, when I use my camera, it'll say one face or two face detected in the middle of the screen. Does mm -hmm. that, do, um, does that do, is that included in your camera device, or you just go to um the Envision, um the Envision thing, and you can do the same thing with that too? Yeah. So, uh, like on the glasses, we don't have like this a uh, real time your know, your face detection thing because people are not really uh, using the glasses to uh you know capture images and you know, store them. 
the glasses are i mean being used for your know, processing information and just you know, just like, uh, like having the stuff spoken out to them uh so i believe that people always have a better you know, cameras on their you know, phone than what we have on the glasses so i think uh, like a smartphone is going to be a better a device to take pictures anyways but on the on like the glasses we don't really you know you or you have a feature like that because of the fact that we don't really uh, intend the use of the glasses to be to take pictures as of now but it can't help you identify photographs on a album or something like if you want to know what the photograph looks like on an album in your album you can can you um it'll identify it for you it should be able to yes so if you do take a uh, like 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 like, like, like you know like an image of a photograph it should be able to uh, describe the contents of the photograph to you yes okay thank you all right Curtis. thank you so much for your question have a good day um then let me bring in uh, uh, pavel um on the call uh, 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 uh hi pavel if you could maybe quickly introduce yourself as to where you're from uh, and then ask your questions um yes hello can you hear me yes i can yes. Uh, hello um my name is pavel i'm originally from poland but currently in vienna austria um i have two quick questions regarding your announcements and the first one is um, so you mentioned that Envision app, the, the standalone uh, smartphone app, will be switching, if I understood correctly, to recognizing whole documents by an offline mechanism. Is this the same mechanism that is used for the off uh, for the short text recognition, or is it a slightly modified one? Um, so I think the engine uh, is the same. Uh, that's in, in in like a background that's you know like doing the recognition of the, of like the text part. But the way an image is a processed for instant text is different from a way an image is processed in scan text, because in instant text we are optimizing for speed. Uh, we do uh, you know, like a process the image in a lot more uh, you know like a, like a different optimization uh, you know, way. But when you do scan text, because we are optimizing for accuracy, uh, the process of of, of, of like a pre-processing that image is a slightly a different from you know, like what we do. Uh, as compared to what we do on, on instant text. Okay, thank you so much for the response. And my second question is, um, is Polish one of the languages supported for the voice commands um, in multiple languages on the glasses or not yet? Yes, it is. Uh, so it is. On the, uh, it, like, uh, it is in the beta at the moment. So that will be mm -hmm. coming out uh, shortly uh, within the next uh, two weeks is, is you know, like the time frame. And, uh, and all the languages that are supported on the Envision glasses, uh, like voice command will be available in all of those languages. Okay, thank you. All right, Paul, thank you so much for your question. Have a good day. All right, uh, before I bring on the next uh, person on the panel, let me just go through some of the Q&A uh, that has uh, come in. Uh, there's a question from like Joseph who asked, will the describe scene a, a feature how a close or a, a, or a far the items are from your position? Um, it does uh, do that at times, uh, Joseph, it does sort of give you an idea of the, of like the positioning of things in, uh, instead of an image. Uh, but it is important to know that it's doing it from a visual uh, image. It's not really uh, using any of the depth information. So, so there is not like a LIDAR or any sort of a depth information that it is are using to uh, indicate the distance. So it can definitely give you an indication of stuff like it can see a building in uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, that is away from you and stuff like that. But it will not be able to give you very accurate, um, I would say, you know, like a distance and stuff like that. Uh, could Envision possibly partner with OCO that is based in the Netherlands? Uh, I think you're talking about OCO, uh, the app, uh, the very good uh, 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 friends of us. It is actually a, a company based in like, uh, Belgium, which is a neighbor of the Netherlands. Uh, and yeah, there is conversations happening between the two teams uh, to be able to uh, like bring the functionality of the OCO app on the Envision glasses. And we'll like, keep you updated on that shortly. Um, hmm. All right. Uh, there's a question from, from Jim uh, 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 Hamilton. He says, when will the GPT-AI feature be available? Um, 
on the explore feature i think uh, that's the that's i think the feature that you are referring to is the one that's coming in to the described scene so in like the, in like the short term as long as the latency and the processing time is pretty significant it's only going to be possible to do it for images so it'll only work with a described scene but as we're able to uh, improve on like on like on like a latency front we'll also introduce it to the video based features like the explore mode uh, there is a question from like Maria who asked, would it be possible to have a toggle to avoid instant type going into a pause mode as browsing into a shop can be challenging? Um, I don't think I understand that question. Uh, would it be possible to have a, have a toggle to avoid instant type going into a pause mode? So there is a way to, you know, like pause instant text on the glasses. So when you do have the glasses on, or if you do a, like a single tap with a one finger, it will just uh, pause the instant text. And if you do a single tap again with one finger, it'll just a resume. So there is already a way to a pause and you unpause uh, when the instant text is speaking out. And if you do a double tap when the instant text is on, it'll always uh, refresh um, the thing. So it'll you know like you know like remove or it'll stop speaking anything it is speaking. It'll uh, refresh and it'll take a fresh picture and it'll again uh, start it uh, you know like fresh. Uh, there is a question from uh, like Vlad who asks, is the Romanian uh, 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 language going to be added as a compatible reading language for the Envision app? Uh, I think we do already support Romanian uh, uh, Vlad as long as I, I remember. Um, but if not, that will be a, be a question for the support uh, team. Uh, I, like as far as you know, like my memory serves, I think R Romanian is a supported. But if it's not, uh, that is definitely something I would recommend you to you know, you know, write to our support at lhsenvision.com and they will add it to the, you know, like, you know, like the pipeline of languages that still need to be added. Um, I will look into that. All right, going back to the raised like, hands, there is a raised hand from like Leah. Uh, 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 Hannah, Alia, uh, if you could unmute yourself and ask us your question. Alia, if you could unmute yourself and ask us your question. Okay, it's 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 oh it's unmuted now, right? Yes, we can hear okay. you. Okay. Uh, good morning. This is Leah in the U.S. And um, uh, I, I'm curious to know if uh, you are able to, is, uh, is, this, uh, is this a good, um, are the glasses a good uh, addition to like mobility? Or would it be better to, you know, if you have, um, uh, if they are, um, I'm sorry, I'm not really expressing myself that well but in terms of mobile uh um like are they good as a mobility aid mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a good like, like a question uh, uh leah and um, i can answer it a bit but i will also probably want to get uh, get like sam's opinion on this uh we don't recommend envision our glasses as an aid for things like obstacle detection or for things like navigation right and the reason we don't do that is because of two things. A, uh, there is always going to be a bit of a latency, uh, you know, like when the glasses are able to capture something and speak it out. Uh, and that a latency is pretty important for people to understand. So if there are obstacles that are you know, like suddenly appearing in, 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 or in front of you, no matter how good the AI is, we will not be able to catch it in time. So there are reasons because of which we don't recommend people to like use these glasses for like mobility in terms of obstacle detection elements, right? So it's not a replacement for something like a white cane, which I think you should still always uh, you know, like use for mobility. And the other aspect is the accuracy aspects, because uh, at the end of the day, whatever I said and done, it's still an AI that is doing the recognition you know, like for you. And even if the AI is a 99.999% accurate, then you know, like might be those a 0. 0.000, like 1% instances where it, there is an obstacle which the AI could not detect and that could lead to an eventuality, which probably is not good. So because of reasons like that, we don't 100% endorse or uh, or encourage people to use these classes for a mobility from that point of view. Uh, but 
you know after having that a disclaimer there are a features in the classes that can <laughs> be very uh sort of helpful uh as you're exploring environments right because there are you know features like the explore mode that will speak of the objects that are around you so we'll say there is a staircase there's a doorway there's a table so just having an understanding of your environment that can be helpful but always as a complementary to your, your your basic obstacle detection tools that you already might have so i think that's the way you know, you know, we look at it and that's why all of the features that we're building is your know, features where even if you know, your ai makes an error the consequence is not like a severe one uh you know, all it, like for the users so until uh, we can be a hundred percent of confident that ai will always be able to accurately detect obstacles and uh be able to you know, inform the users within a fraction of a second i think that that is going to be our stance on this but uh, maybe i'm going to ask this to you know, sam like if you have a similar or a different opinion about like are using envision classes or any such devices as a mobility aid yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, I'd say that it, it definitely falls more into the orientation side of it for like orientation and mobility. So, you know, definitely reading out signs, <clears throat> street signs, reading out um, directions, reading out uh, hotel numbers or where the bathroom is, you know, that's that's really where the Envision glasses are going to be helpful for that. Um, and it detecting stairs and things like that. You're right. But, but yeah, for not for obstacle detection, it really doesn't have anything specifically designed for that, or that could help out with that, but definitely the orientation. Uh, like Alia, I hope that answers your question. I think so. Um, hold on. Uh, um, it, uh, it should, uh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I messed up. Uh, yeah, I think that answers my question. I, I, I usually, I usually use a cane anyway, so I, I, I figured it wouldn't be like, you know, a cure all for it, for all that. But I mean, at least I use a cane for the other, for the rest. So, uh, thank you yeah. very much. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for your question. Um, with that, let me bring on Dr. Douglas Udali. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Dr. Uh, Douglas, you can unmute yourself and ask us your question. Dr. Doug. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was wondering, with the AI it seemed like I got, you know, tremendous amount of information, but there might be times when I'd want to constrict that. Is there a possibility or is it already that maybe the field of vision on the camera could be reduced to, say, 30 or 45 percent or 60 percent view from the center? In other words, looking straight ahead would be zero and you could look say 15 degrees to the right or left to constrict it because I can see in some cases if I'm looking for a particular doorway and there's several right in a row I might want to constrict the number and not hear all of the wonderful information about the festivities of the fall for example and the cars <laughs> that are parked there you know yeah um understood so, so there is no um you're like you're, 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 you're a way to you physically or digitally decrease the field of your view right because the way these are cameras they work so they do have a field of view but the output is always a two-dimensional image uh, that's basically what the output you get and it so it, uh, like 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 the, like the physics of it is not as straightforward as just decreasing the field of view because of how the output of these cameras are should be presented to us. But that being said, uh, this whole ask and vision is specifically a built to solve for that, where you can specifically ask for information that you are interested in, right? 
So you can ask it to ignore all of this, you know, your, like a description of everything in the environment. If you're looking for something very, very specific that you know is in like the center of the image, you can simply ask it to only give you a description of that, right? For example, you are at like, you know, like a shop front and it, there is a bunch of other stuff outside as well. You can ask Envision be like, hey, I just want to know about what does the display on the shop front looks like. Right? So it will ignore like, you know, like the pathway, the footpath, the cars and everything else that's probably captured in the image and only keep the description of your, your focus to the thing that you're interested in. So that sort of is the way uh, to address that your problem because different people obviously are looking for different types of information. So instead of playing around with the field of view, I think this is a more uh, you know, suitable a solution for a problem like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. All right, uh, with that, let me bring on Vlad. Uh, Vlad, you can unmute yourself and ask us your question. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Okay, so yeah, this is Vlad from Romania. I also have a question, like it's more about the Envision app since it's not by yet the uh, Envision glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm having some issues, like I do not know, like, how to like focus the camera in order to read the, the text accurately for the thing like the you know any kind of text like on the paper or just some even for whatever it's needed mm -hmm. you know i don't know like how to do that properly and i really wonder because i'm totally blind so i can't i don't have any light perception so i can say that i could like uh, know how to focus the camera to sure sure i think uh, uh, when it comes to orienting uh, the camera in a way uh, to sort of you know to understand exactly what's in front of you that is a bit of a learning or a like curve there are a features within the envision app like yeah. detecting objects and things like detecting edges of a document and stuff like that that do you know assist you in uh, your orienting uh, the camera on the phone in, in a way where all of a document is captured, uh, but uh, it can be a bit more uh, challenging when it comes to your text that is direct, not in a document form and things like that. Uh, but like uh, maybe I can pass this question on to uh, 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 to Wiki, uh, you know, like who is our ambassador who is also completely blind. So maybe a uh, Wiki, you could probably uh, uh, you know, probably help Avlad understand how are you, uh, you know, sort of orient uh, like a camera when you're uh, really, like using apps like Envision uh, to take a picture. Like even for the scanning text, uh, it, would, like, yeah. it has some issues, that's what I was asking. Okay, Karthik, I'm, I apologize. Can you please repeat your question because I, I'm trying to multitask, so I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I wasn't able to hear your question. So would you mind repeating that, please? Yes, sure. So. Vlad here is actually having some uh, difficulties in orienting the camera on his phone uh, for uh, using uh, you know, features on the phone like the scan text and instant text and things like that. So I was uh, 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 hoping if you have some uh, tips uh, you know, like for like Vlad or as to how he can uh, improve the way uh, of orienting the camera on the phone in a way that he's able to capture text properly. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Well, let me tell you, it is definitely a, a matter of trial and error. I've been blind since birth. So uh, Thank my, you. Uh, my, give me one second. I hope that uh, my, my phone is my time. Okay. Um, anyway, so just to, sorry about that. My, my phone is telling me my battery's about to die. I'm like, no, don't be dying yet, phone. I need you. Anyway, um, so it's a, it's really a, a lot of trial and error um, on the, um, you know, as far as that goes. I've been blind my whole life, and I've been using apps like this now for, well, pretty much ever since they've been out. Um, I would say um, the a lot of these apps like Envision and, and others will give you some orientation. What I do, for example, is I will just hover my phone above the text that I want to scan, um, you know, for example, if it's like, a, I don't know what, if you're trying to scan um, a, a um, like a, like a, a letter or something like that, um, it'll tell a lot of the apps will tell you, you know, how much of the document is visible. 
Um, so I, I definitely use the guidance that the app offers if it does offer guidance. Um, yeah, like how, same thing. how much is the distance that you have to call? Because that's how I use it too. Like I prefer to do like over the, like put the phone camera over the thing, but like what's the distance between the, like what should be the so, distance between the phone and the... Oh, be, the okay, well that kind of, uh, okay. That kind of depends on, um, on, on the document that you're scanning. I would say... Mm, gosh, about I'm I'm bad when it comes to distances, and you might be in in a different part. I use we use inches and feet here in the United States. You might use meters when in your part of the world where you yes. are where you are. <laughs> so that's going to be a little difficult. But I yeah, would but say I have, been in, I, I have been in two years, so I'm kind of used to this. Thing. Oh, okay, okay then, okay, good, okay. So I would say, well, um, maybe. Five, maybe about five, six inches or so from, from you know, if you hover it about five or six inches over the page, over the paper that you're trying to scan. Um, if it's, if it's, um, I find that if, if, um, if it's larger or smaller, I may have to, you know, ch you know, adjust that. But um, again, I feel like that if, if it's not getting the, the, the document properly, it's gonna it's not gonna it's gonna say you know edge is not visible or whatever so then at that point i know okay let me try to go a little bit closer to the page let me go a little bit further from the page you know that sort of thing mm. it's kind of a matter of how much how much you want but if it's like a regular sheet of paper i would say yeah I, about um about four or five inches i don't know if i don't know if kartik if you can see where my hand is like like this is my my arm here is here uh and then the page would be here, for example. So that I would say that's about four or five inches. Wouldn't you say, Kartik? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that that's about where I put it. Um, and I try to also scan things flat. Like even, for example, I, I like to use barcode identification a lot. And um, some people are very good at being able to take a can, for example, and being able and 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 um, um, the uh, most uh sorry i got my voice over interrupted me <laughs> um interrupted my train of thought so a lot of some people are are lucky or are able to actually take a can and stand it up and and take the barcode from it that way i'm not really able to do that so i like to lie the can or the bottle flat and then i just turn the bottle or can slowly until you know mm -hmm. i get the little um notification that it's seeing the barcode and again, I for that for barcodes, I usually raise my phone about a couple, maybe two, three and inches what, above what, the product. Which uh, Envision feature used for that, like the scan text or the the, the document? No, there is, well on the on the Envision app, there is a barcode scanner. There, on the actual Envision app, there is a barcode scanning feature. So I use the barcode scanning feature on the Envision app. And what it does is it will um, once it detects the barcode, it'll give you like a little vibration indication. So it vibrates, and that is how you know that um, that that it um, that that is how you know that it is um, that it's detected the barcode. So um, yeah, so you just so the the Envision app just look for the barcode scanner. The and um, and if you have an idea of where the barcode is that is really helpful as well um for example like on bottles and cans it's the the barcode is um usually near the seam of where the where the can is uh, on the can it's it's near like that seam area of the can um same thing with bottles um and then on on boxes it's kind of tricky it, it can be in different places but i usually just kind of um I usually just kind of go around the all the edges of the box and the middle of the box and that. But usually it's a bit easier because a flat surface is usually easier to um, identify barcodes. So I hope, mm -hmm. I know that's a lot of information, but I, does that help yeah, at all? Yeah, and the, that's, that's the, my other little thing is like, how much light do I need for this? Like, that, that's how much, I... how much, what do you mean? How much, you mean to buy the glasses? No, no, no. I'm talking about how much light, like. Uh... Oh, how much light? Oh, well, if you've got an iPhone, um, what what kind of what kind of device do you use? It's an iPhone eight right now. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, the iPhone 8 should be okay um, because most of these apps, if it's if the a lot of times I actually use this in a in where the, the there's no light in the room at all, and so in those situations, uh, the app knows to automatically turn the flash on the phone on, to to enable the flash on the phone. So um, it typically should not require a lot of light. I mean, if you've got some light, it it will help. But usually um, the, it, the the apps are smart enough to enable the flashlight on the phone if it needs it. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Sure, no problem. All right, Vlad, thank you so much. And uh, Vicky, thanks for uh, your, like jumping on and answering that. Uh, we are running a, a short on time. So maybe I'm going to take two more uh, questions and then we will unfortunately have to bring this to the close. Uh, let me call on Farishta. Uh, like Farishta, if you could unmute yourself and ask us your question. Um, hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so my, uh, I have a uh, um, few uh, very quick questions. The the first one is, uh, um, uh, I hope uh, means, uh, uh uh, are we going to meet you at uh, Side Village uh, on the 7th of November in London? Yes. Uh, so, uh, like, Avenessa, uh, you're like from our team, and uh, Priyanka from our team will actually be at the Site Village in uh, London. We'll be at the booths of Sight and Sound. So, that's where you will be able to find the Envision team. Perfect. And uh, also, um, um, I believe uh, the the big problem we always have with uh, orientation or detecting the, um, the obstacles uh, are the uh, for instance uh, the the they uh, dig the floor there is uh, like a gap or step going down. Uh, uh, are we able to uh, to use uh, uh, envision glasses uh, for for that uh, things or no? Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't really understand the question. Could you? You know, uh, when when we are using the glasses, uh, it can easily detect the obstacles which are raised, but mm -hmm. what about obstacles which are not raised, like, uh, like mm -hmm. a gap, like an even floor, like a step going down or something like that? Understood. So, um, take, uh, to, uh, like, to, like, to like, uh, clarify, uh, uh, first this. so the glasses do, do not do any kind of obstacle detection at all at the moment. There is no feature within the glasses for obstacle detection. That's what I was explaining to um, you know, to uh, you know that lady who was on the call earlier is that we intentionally avoid doing any obstacle detection stuff on the glasses because of the fact that the accuracy on of this AI models can not not be close to hundred percent, and there's always going to be a, your chances where we will not be able to detect obstacles, and that could have your consequences. Um, at the same time, uh, because of, of a latency, because of the time it takes to process images, uh, your obstacle detection is uh, you know, like, you know, something that we don't want to enter into intentionally as of now. Okay. Uh, uh, what we do is object detection. So we will detect objects that are in the camera frame. So it will inform you about objects like there's a chair, there's a table, there's a door, there are staircases. So it can give you a description of objects that are in your environment. But it's not to be used as an obstacle detection tool. Okay, so mainly the objects are uh, means raised uh, of, of the floor, but not something. For instance, if I drop a piece of paper, the uh, the glasses doesn't help me to find the paper. Technically, it could. So even if it's something that's on the surface on the floor, the way the glasses are work is that it's just looking at image of your frames and within an image, it's trying to look for that particular object, right? So even if it's something that's fallen on the floor, of course, you will have to 
look at the direction of the floor for the glasses to be able to you know, you know, see it. But as soon as the image is within the camera frame, it should be able to detect it and speak it out. Okay. And my last question is um, about, um, you know, uh, if someone um, wears the sunglasses and, for instance, say, going to the cinema or, um, or watching the TV, do the blind person still need uh, the audio description or it will be able to, uh, means the glass will be able to describe whatever is on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so as of now, I would still uh, probably I recommend having the audio description thing done because of you know, like two reasons. Uh, one would be uh, as of now, the glasses, the way they you know, like, uh, describe a scene is on the basis of images. Uh -huh. So it does not describe a continuous stream of you know, video at the moment, right? And that's because of the limitation with the processing an image that it takes. So it still takes a few uh, seconds for it to you know, process an image and speak the output out to you. And because of that, uh, it's not ideal for a video, you know, like frames, for example, something that you would need when you're you know, watching a movie. And the second thing is that even though uh, the glasses have a lot of the context of, you know, of the world in a general, when it comes to something like a like a movie, which probably has a very specific you know, context to it, where it needs to know who the character is and things like that, an order a description will always do a better job than AI at the moment. I would say. So I think in the in you know, in like short term, I would still I recommend an audio description over you know, having the glasses I describe the scenes to you at a movie theater. Thank you very much. All right, Tracy. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you. I'm going to take a final you know, like, a, 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 a question um, and uh, for that I'll bring on bring on a Peter uh, to the panel. A Peter, uh, you could unmute yourself and ask us a question. Hello. Yes, hi Peter, how are you doing today? Yes, um, I'm, I'm working with a developer of uh, an application and what is the process for getting the application partnered onto the Envision classes uh, or just through the Envision app itself? So the Envision uh, imagery can go ahead and reach out and, and work with this other app. Is there a, a process you could describe, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we're always look, looking for you know, your applications to add to the classes. Uh, as of now, it is you know, you know, on a selective basis, it's not an open a process for, for you know, like for any app developer to come in. Uh, so what I would I recommend as the best way for now would be to uh, you know, you know, shoot a mail to a support at letsenvision.com. Uh, and in that mail, you can uh, you know, indicate the fact that you are on the webinar and you already you know, uh, like had a chat with me about this application. And they will uh, sort of like pass on that email internally, uh, you know, to the development team, who can then uh, follow up with you and uh, like work towards uh, like you know, reviewing uh, like your application, and uh, and uh, and uh, seeing if there's a potential of integrating that with either Envision or Glasses or the application. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Have a good day. All right. Uh, I still, uh, you know, like you know, see some are, are, are raised hands, but we are already uh, about uh, like fifteen minutes over uh, the webinar. Uh, your, 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 like our time that we had, so I would unfortunately have to stop the webinar now. If there are uh, questions that have not been answered out here, uh, you can always uh, shoot, uh, you know, like uh, questions that you have to support at letsenvision.com. We have a very you know, like a proactive you know, you know, like a customer success team and they will answer your questions at the earliest. You can also reach out to us on any of our social uh, like media uh, uh, you know, uh, like channels. So you can do it on your Facebook, uh, X, uh, you can do it on Instagram or any of the platforms that uh, you have a preference for. And all of those tickets are you know, like monitored by our customer success team very frequently. 
uh with that i would like to I would like to thank everybody who you know have uh, like shown up to the webinar today um uh, i appreciate all of you for taking the time and are listening to our, your like monthly updates there's a lot of amazing things still happening in the labs of envision there's a lot more exciting stuff for us to announce before the end of the year so like do stay tuned and i will you know, like see you next month with your know, some more exciting updates and with more exciting topics for us to discuss and talk about but for now i wish all of you have a good day ahead and uh, goodbye have a great rest of the week everyone